Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the May 2nd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? Yeah, let's do that. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email like uh, Richard or Bob and Alex have done. Uh, so you can do that. If you do send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, by the way. Uh, just put radio show question in that subject heading. makes it so much easier for me. And send them early. It's I, I always feel terrible when they come in, you know, they, they arrive maybe around 155 or something like that. I don't know. It's possible between ISPs and things like that, that. And then I don't get to it because I'm in the last segment of the show. So send those early if you would. And then, of course, in the Tiger's Den, like Ruby, uh, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got the Dow off 209 points. 26,220 is the print. About eight tenths of a percent to the downside. Half a percent to the downside in the S&P. That's 15 points. Three quarters of a percent to the downside inside the Nasdaq 100. The Russell 2000 is basically flat. That's right. It is flat. It is trading out at 1575. The semis are up eight points. They're trading at 1552. Trannies are up nine tenths of a percent. That's up 90 points out there. Uh, gold is back 12 bucks. Silver's off 11 pennies. Light sweet crude down 230. And I think we're going to start in the light sweet crude area. We're going to go right to our questions, see if how these questions may be kind of serpentine us into the market. Of course, I want to ask what uh, you want to ask. So Robert B. Uh, writes in, he says, uh, what is support for U.S. So on a daily and weekly time frame. So Robert trades light sweet crude. He uses the uh, ETF, the USO, as the vehicle to do that. And uh, so Robert is asking, where is support? So the first thing that you and I are looking at, kind of standard out here, is we put up our daily, weekly, monthly time frame. And we've got daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly uh, TAS market profile. So one of the things that you know, Robert, uh, with regard to the daily time frame is prices traded below support. Support would have been the bottom box, 1320 held yesterday. It gave way today. Now let's go take a look at the USO. Let's take a look at today's volume so far is about 27, 28 million shares. The swing point of an A to B equals CD to the downside would be the swing point from April 26. There were 42 million shares. Seems to me at this stage here, straight line math, that you are taking out that swing point with wide price spread and accelerated volume. So now you've got the A to B equals CD pattern out here. Now A to B equals CD pattern provides you and I with price projection levels. The first one is the one-to-one -one area, and that's at 1246. Uh, the second is at 1222, that's 1 1.272. Number three is at 1191, the 1 1.618. What the system doesn't tell us is which of these levels is the target. Now, when you take out a B point, as this has done, with wide price spread and accelerated volume, uh, this would suggest to you and I that it's going to be more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. Just a suggestion that that is a likely outcome. The way that you know that this pattern is complete is the bulls will have to show up. So you're looking for support here, and on a daily basis, it won't show up until it shows up. And when I say shows up, what I mean is you'll see some type of bullish reversal candle. 
On a weekly time frame chart, if we're looking at its TAS market profiles, what you're going to see is it's below resistance. That was the top at 1337. You're only going to see two profiles out here. The bottom and the center happen to match up and be the same price point. That is 1099. Is that the price target out there? It's possibility. But the reality is, as you know, Robert, that really the USO is going to be all based upon the round-the-clock trading that takes place in light sweet crude. And this is really where the decision needs to be made. Now, on this chart here, we can see that prices below the weekly and the daily profiles out here. The weekly was 6208. So that suggests to you and I that the change in that there is a change in trend in light sweet crude. If we take a look at, at its A to B equals C D price objectives out here. It's going to give us the one-to-one -one in the 6043 level. Now, we've been down as low as 6095. Um, but to, today, is, if price closes, now, of course, it's a weekly chart. So let's put it in better perspective. If tomorrow, uh, Light Sweet Crude closes under 6208, it will have broken that level of support. Um, 59 and a quarter, 5776, 5611, those are all price objectives of the A to B equals CD down pattern out here. So I think uh, to help you to identify support, now that we're past the B point with accelerating volume, with ride price spread, the only way to find support is to continue to watch the uh, chart for Light Sweet Crew. That's where I would be watching it, and I would be looking for some type of, because what this sets up, as you each of you can see out here, nice move off of the bottom from December 24th, and really this would be the first uh, Gartley buy pattern that could form for Light Sweet Crew. So we'll want to pay attention to this, most certainly, uh, but where that price is going to be, I don't know. I could just give you a target area. So, Robert, I hope that helps you out with regard to the USO. Let's go take a look at the next question that uh, rolled in here. This one coming from Alex. Alex says, hey, Steve. So I say, hey, Alex. He says, the QQQ made an all-time high, 191.32 yesterday, May Day, and um, in April 29th to the penny. Okay, so kind of a double top there. Does the NQ show a double top? on those days. Okay, so specifically, let's go take a look at the NQ out here, and let's do that by switching over and take a look at our profiles, and the answer is no. Now, um, here what you're going to see, Robert, is the actual high in the NQ, all-time high, was at 78.79.50, and that was on the trading session of April 25th. Yesterday was a close, but no cigar, when price got up to a high of 78.67.25. But why were you asking the question there? I guess you were asking it as, maybe I'm having to read into this, is this a double top or something like that? Um... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Does it, does it, in order to have that type of pattern, do you have to hit it to the tick? I, that's not how I take a look at it. I would say since you had asked about the NQ, the more important question is, on this pullback so far, is the change in trend, if we received a change in trend signal? The answer there is no, we have not. When would we get that? We would get a change in trend signal in the NQ, so a la QQQ ETF, with a close below the bottom of its daily profile at 76.2682. Price found support where both buyers and sellers were comfortable with price. A bullish structured profile, that was at 76.82. There's no change in trend at the moment inside the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's off 157, S&P 9, NASDAQ 100 off 37 points. The Russell, the semis, and the transports are all uh, positive out here. But we'll take a look at what meaning is in that. Of course, I, I want to I look at exactly what you want to look at. So uh, please go ahead, send me emails. Give me a call, steve at tfnn.com. But we're going to go take a look at Ruby's request, Sweet Ruby Thursday. And Ruby wants to take a look at uh, gold. So let's first begin by taking a look at the uh, four different times frame market profiles for it here ruby we've got 60 minute 122 40 so we've got the one hour two hour four hour and then we have the daily time frame uh, what we'll see out here on the 60 minute because i know you said you took a long position this morning so from a 60 minute standpoint what you would like to see your next level of resistance you're looking at the left hand panel box out here and i don't know how long this profile will stay but it's the one that is present right now and that level of resistance is 1273.50 so that's what you would be looking at on a Two-hour time frame, prices are below the bottom of that profile, 1272. So you'd certainly like to see price overtake that level. Of course, clearing 1273.50 would take care of that for you. That would then set up a run to 1275. Even though there's small dollar increments, you're trying to find a bottom is what it sounds like to me. And these are the levels that you need to see price take out because above the top of a profile is always a positive thing. Now, on the four-hour time frame, we're so far away from the profile that has formed the bottom which is 1284 that it's really kind of insignificant to you as we speak right now here's what we know when we take a look at the daily time frame we've seen a retest of the prior low that prior low was a trading session here from uh, April the 23rd that low was 1267.90 the low that we've seen today has been 1267.30 so by 60 pennies it's rejected that area um, I don't have a volume per se that I'm going to rely upon on this chart right here but you certainly would like to see that level hold now on the daily time frame chart there is an a to b equal cd to the downside as well if we take a look at that ruby that's going to give us a one-to-one -one price projection of 1262.30 now you don't have to hit it exactly uh, but it's still open out there when you're trading below the bottom of the box which it is right now at 1277.20 not a good thing 
because it says, okay, continued change in trend. Gold is traded below the bottom of the profiles. It began doing that back here in uh, March. And so we can see that it has continued to, in essence, do the same thing after some different counter trend rallies out there. So what ideally for the A to B equals CD pattern, you'd like to see some type of bullish reversal candle. So you might ask the question out here, and I'll put this chart, might be easier for you to see. You'd say, well, didn't we see one of those? We did back here in the trading session of April 24th. Um, so today's just a retest of that bullish level, but closing below that April 24th or 23rd level, not a good thing. And I can't, I'm not suggesting to you that 1261, the one to one price projection, would be the place where price would stop. Now, you're searching for a bottom. If we do the wave counts from the swing point out here that began our A to B equals CD pattern, February 20th, you happen to be the lucky soul who has entered based on wave number seven. That is letter number G that is on my system. That often can be a uh, signal for a change in trend. That's in the daily, so that's good. But of course, you want to see continued levels of resistance, at least on the shorter term timeframes, get taken out. We haven't seen that yet, 60 minute, 120 minute, and clearly we're below the bottom of the profile on the uh, daily. Now on a weekly time frame, so wave number seven, inside of uh, the uh, daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, you've got that TD set up nine count that formed uh, last week. We have a lower low today. We just proved that out here, slightly lower low. That's okay because in a TD set up nine count, if there's going to be a change in trend, it'll occur on either bars eight, nine, or the bar following. We're now in the week in the bar following, so that's okay. But clearly, price needs to get up above Stevie's green line out here at 12.95. That's not what you're dealing with with right now, but you'd want to kind of use that as a future reference point. So what are we saying? We're saying the weekly says potential for change in uh, a bottom. We're saying the daily shows potential, but now we've got to get the inner day time frames to really kick in for you. Well, we haven't looked at a 30 minute time frame. That would be the, well, shoot, I don't have the 30 minute time frame. Um, what can? What else can I share with you then on the, I could, I could change it, but I'm not gonna change it. Uh, I'm just gonna go with the 60 minute out there because there's more information. Hey, we talked about wave number seven, which by the way, I don't know if wave number seven, Ruby, is, is a lucky thing for you or not. But if you take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart, when it did make its most recent high out here, and you remember we were taking a look at that all together because it was at the end of the show, uh, or the beginning of the show. This was at 1 o'clock back on April 26. Yeah, April 26. It got to wave number seven out there. Uh, so I think you're hoping that wave number seven on the downside is going to be the bottom pattern. Now, price was also stretching, moving lower, doing less relative energy out there. We did happen to get a bullish engulfing candle right here at 12 noon. So now, Ruby, what you know on this 60-minute time frame is you have bottoming potential out here. You want to see price take out resistance, at least the top of that 60-minute profile, 1273.50. So how is that for an analysis? Uh, on uh, gold and what it's doing. In essence, it is showing signs of life, but it's also showing signs of uh, getting ready to walk off the plank, so to speak. And the plank would be a close below the uh, today, certainly would be a close below the low from April 23rd, 1267.90. That's what you should be watching. So hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks for writing in, even through the Tiger's Den. So let's see, do we have anything else out here? Uh, we don't at the moment, but send those cards and letters. Keep them coming. Let's go take a look at what else it is that we can identify in the uh, markets out here. So where are we going to start? We're going to start by taking a look at uh, one of the things that we talked about yesterday. One of the keys was the 50-day exponential moving average for the uh, uh, spot volatility index. Right now, that's priced at 1422. We're trading at 1471. So watch 1422 at the end of the day. Yesterday was a close above the 50-day. Today could be a second close above that. When you get closes above that, that's where you can really see some uh, uh, evil can evil carnage out there, so to speak. 
but you won't really get the confirmation of that carnage with regard to the spot volatility index until we correlate it to what's going on inside the ES mini. So as we go do that, we uh, explode, not explode, but open up the ES mini chart, what you're going to see that it hasn't done to give you the doble gi confirmation is 2894.50. That's really where price needs to close below inside the ES mini to say things are going to get rocking and rolling to the downside, to where we can take a look at weekly profiles and so on and so forth. But but right now, what we have is a a, a conflict of uh, market messages. I was not going to say interest. We have a we we have the advanced we have the spot volatility index. We didn't even talk about the advanced decline. We've got the spot volatility index right now trading above its 50 day. So watch that end of day reading out there. It'll provide you with a bunch of information. However, if it closes above the 50-day, what does it mean for the ES Mini overnight? It probably means what we should see. Probably means what we should see. Here's what it means. It means the ES Mini is going to go at least test the bottom of that profile, 28.95. This is the absolute worst case scenario for the S&P. The ES Mini closes below 28.90, we'll call it 28.94 and the spot volatility index above its 50-day exponential moving average. Look. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So you got the uh, Dow off 155, S&P down 9. And uh, so we're taking a look at the S&P. <coughs> Excuse me. Peter had wanted to take a look at the ES, which we were doing 
excuse me, kind of got something caught in the throat there. <coughs> Uh, and I don't know, Peter, if I really got to what you were looking at. You were saying the ES is above 2909. So let me try to figure out what you were really referring to there. But let me just do this here. Let me take a look at the ES mini here on a 30-minute uh, time frame. And here's what we know right now. We know that price was pushing lower through the uh, morning right into the 12 noon time frame. We know that because uh, my system was automatically drawing those lines. Now, when those lines get drawn, they're, they're just a warning signals. They don't mean a thing until it finds that swing, and that swing is some type of bullish reversal candle. And that took place at 1230. Since then, we have seen a bounce off of that. Uh, what this would suggest to you and I, if the bounce is going to prevail, that right now the new 30-minute profile, which is bullish in structure, so you would watch 2904 to the downside. You were talking about 2909. And I apologize because I don't know exactly where that's coming from, the middle of the box. Okay, great. Um, but here on the 30-minute time frame, resistance is 29.29. In essence, about where the where the move today began uh, to the uh, to the downside inside the ES mini. A price above Stevie's uh, red line, which is 29.14. So this is suggesting to you a further bounce is likely a fairly wide price spread because it was a 25 point price spread, uh, 2904 at the bottom, 2929 at the top. So that's what the 30 minute time frame chart is uh, showing to uh, to both you and I. If we uh, expand that, go to a 60 minute time frame. What's going on here? Here it's showing us we same type of pattern, but no bullish reversal candle. And this says the counter trend rally. If it's run out of steam, it did that a few minutes ago as price got to 2917 that is stevie's red line so you'll watch the 2917 ish area out there you know if you're an intraday type trader if i look at the uh, two hour time frame it too was trying to make the same pattern uh which is price pushing on a string pushing lower doing less energy no bullish reversal candle yet but there's still 30 minutes left or 28 minutes left in this session out here i believe that, yeah this one ends at two and so it just depends on where price closes out that session to determine whether or not this is generating a bottoming signal out here um the daily peter had mentioned the daily here's the daily time frame for the es he was referring to 2909 being the center of the box out there uh so yes uh look the the es mini we all covered this yesterday along with many of the indices they all show topping signals pretty much all i think all but two of them have shown topping signals now when you get those signals which were confirmed yesterday yes a nice big old bearish engulfing candle ruby and i we were talking about wave number seven the es mini on a daily basis looks like that is going to be wave number seven that can be where you get a change in trend but as peter noted 2909 is held the other level peter would say hey You've got to get a close. You, the ES Mini, has to close below 2894 in order to generate a change in trend signal. Otherwise, price is just doing what it's supposed to when you get uh, topping-ish type signals is pulling back to support. So the ES Mini has not broken support. One of the equity futures contracts has, and that was the YM. So when we had this chart up on our screen... We had this up on our screen out here. Well, it wasn't that. It was probably this one. Notice the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract. The key level there still is 26,332. That would be a heck of a rally, which could unfold out here. But right now, price is below that. So the Dow is suggesting a change in trend. Not the case with the NQ, not the case with the ES, and not the case with the Russell 2000. So let's go to a call. We've got John and Philly on the line. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Uh, how are you? Hey, Steve, I'm very good. I um, wanted to ask your help, please. I uh, called in and gave uh, your producer the uh, uh, the symbol for copper futures. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. Steve, I wanted to just uh, uh, ask you your general opinion on, on this question. Is the abrupt... Wow. 
So, so I, I know John wanted to ask that question, and that is his trick to see if I can finish the question. Uh, is it the game of Jeopardy here? And I'm not going to play that game because I can't answer it. We're going to wait for John to call back in. And, uh, um, and uh, But you try to figure out what was he going to ask me. I, I know he should be on the phone here soon. But uh, um, uh, So here's what we know right now while we're waiting for John to call, which is the uh, – the, uh, he's back. Okay, great. Back, John, you're back on. With, talk about abruptness. How'd that happen? You there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we've, we're being trolled here, I'm afraid. Uh, 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 yes, we are. But I think it's your line. I think it's your, I think it's your line. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Could be. Hey, uh, Steve, I wanted to ask you this. Um, we've had abrupt selling in oil, copper, palladium, platinum. Uh, and, you know, a little bit of selling in some stock indices. But given those, uh, those commodity futures I just mentioned, um, are you drawing any conclusions about what that means and developed any, any position swing trade ideas resulting from any message you've gotten from that? I'm just wondering. No, I, I I haven't. I haven't given it really a speck of time, but uh, maybe you have, which would be nice. Um, and so, what have what have you what have you what have what has it meant to you? What does it mean to you at this stage? Well, I just um, uh, actually I haven't. I don't have an answer. I like you. I've given it some thoughts, but I haven't come up with an answer. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm groping for answers. And. Uh, that that is my bottom line. Um, I would uh, I would say this: the abrupt uh, turn in those uh, commodity markets and the fairly sizable, you know, four and five day percentage changes. Yeah. Um, it could be it could be just um, uh, a little mini panic that's done, it's a flash in the pan. Uh, on the other hand, it could be indicative of something, uh, something sizable going on, something, something in the uh, heart of the financial system. And, yeah. uh, and hence, uh, you know, I'm asking this question, so. So I think maybe, so, so with that information, I guess the way that I, if it was just a, just a flash, just a quick washout or something. I think we take a look at the, and I, I have the continuous contract up on my screen right now, John, just because uh, for this set of charts and tools, I didn't have the uh, the July contract out there. Um, mm -hmm. But but typically we see if, if it's just kind of like a knee jerk reaction, it's just like a two to three day push down and then a recovery which is possibly what's going on inside the equity markets right now. I don't know. You know, we're kind of in day two out here. But when I look at the high-grade copper uh, contract, it looks a little bit more uh, like there's further retracement to go. There's a, For me, there's a clear A to B equals CD to the downside. And, uh, John, do you want to hold on through the break, or do you just want me to kind of elaborate on that? When I no, I'll, I'll hold through and listen. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll be back with John and Philly in just a few moments. Stay with us, folks, and we'd love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're on the line with John in uh, Philly, and we're taking a look. Uh, first, we're just taking a look at the at the high grade copper uh, contract out here. And uh, before we went to break, we were taking a look at an A to B equals CD to the downside. But many of you uh, may not have that tool on your system. But one of the other patterns, John, that I see out here, the simple pattern, is that is a uh, consolidation which was busted through yesterday. And uh, so the consolidation pattern gives us a measured move. It's equal to the same consolidation level. And that would give us a downside projection for high-grade copper in the 271-ish uh, level. Now, when I turn the A to B equals CD pattern uh, on, we're going to see that it's uh, currently at the one-to-one -one area. Uh, no bullish reversal signal. So for me, in order for that pattern to complete, we would need to see some type of bullish candle. So this says the next step to the downside would be in the 275 level, 270 below that, you know, and some change out there. So I see a continued move here. And then the difference with regard to, let's say, high grade copper, maybe its correlation, if you will, to the markets. Let me get rid of the consolidation boxes out here is the mere fact that price is now below uh, the uh, daily time frame. Oops, I was going to put both the daily and the weekly. Uh, price is now below support of both daily and weekly. So yesterday's move uh, below that 2.87 level, that was a really critical level of support that it had broken. Whereas right now in the equity markets, uh, what we know is the only equity market to have done something similar would be the Dow. Um, and right now, the Dow is trading right at the bottom of its weekly profile. So, folks, the number you'll want to watch there, and this is the Dow Equity Futures contract, would be 25395 Whereas for the other three contracts, uh, support hasn't even been tested out there. That's not to say that we don't have a change in trend, um, but we don't have a confirmation of that. So, I, I mean, that's what I see when I take a look at those charts. I don't know that it really you know, kind of addresses, um, is there some other meaning there? And maybe is that, were you kind of going down the road of a liquidity issue, liquidity crunch, or what, maybe expand a little bit? Yeah, well, Steve, uh, well, here's what we do know. Um, 
since the rally in stocks and actually all risk assets yeah. started to mature, and I'll pick a date, March 1st, as being a, uh, a point in time when things started to mature. Namely, we had gotten well past the fear generated and the oversold conditions and the liquidation of the short sellers, uh, you know, off that December 26 bottom in a bunch of markets. And then subsequent to that, we kept on pressing higher, and you you were documenting thoroughly uh, the suppression in volatility instruments. In other words, every time there was a, a minor dip in something and a minor blip up in uh, volatility tools, uh, shorts would pound that lower. Yeah. And what we've seen, uh, or what I speculate has occurred in financial markets, is an accumulation of uh, leverage long positions. Now, what uh, what strikes me as being um, something to think hard about, to pay attention to, is these uh, raw material commodity futures price declines just in the past week. And, you know, certainly palladium and oil are not linked. Right. But the fact that we've had copper oil, you know, oil, uh, uh, platinum, uh, palladium, aluminum, uh, the tin futures over in London, everything's reversed quite hard. And these were, and those markets were not, you know, up at record highs. Right. Saying, oh gosh, speculators must be massively long. So quite, you know, I'm asking the question: Are we seeing uh, a uh, a big uh, canary in the coal mine? economically or financial system wise of course i don't have the answer to that but i'm asking that question and yeah yeah what i'm think what i'm thinking is um if if we are a liquidation event of some sort could set up in in equities as well so that's well there's thought. no look there's no doubt about that and so when you just take the kind of like your last two sentences out there um, we all should be on the lookout for something like that to occur. And I think it's it's very evident when we take a look at, um, at least here's, here's our four core um, cash indices, the Dow, the S&P at the top, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000 on the bottom. And I'll just kind of use the Dow, the upper left-hand panel, folks, because the consolidation pattern that it has been in since January of last year, it is still around. And we can see that uh, price has not been able to bust through that consolidation. One of those levels would have been 26,616, or still is. Another level could be 26,951, and then just slightly above that because of a trend line. So to me, that's the consolidation area of this uh, of the Dow. And you know what what uh, Ob1 has taught both you and I. We love some of these expressions. If you can't bust them up, it tries to bust them down. And if the Dow or the other markets are going to bust them down, the Dow easily could go back and revisit uh, the lows of last year or at least some significant retracement of that. And for me, the way that we would know, the signal that, that uh, would give us the highest probability that that is unfolding, and the Dow is actually taking place right now. It isn't taking place in the other equity futures contracts. That doesn't mean that they won't. It's just not taking place right now. For me, the easy signal is uh, because of knowing that we have seen short sellers try to try to create this top out here on several occasions where their attempts have been thwarted has been at the bottom of those profiles where the buyers have been. And that was you mentioned March 1st. So March 8th was the perfect time frame to prove that geez, the sellers are still out here and they're going to defend their position. That was the bottom of the profile. They came back and defended it the following day, too, and then it was back off to the races until the sellers said on March 22nd, hey, we're going to give it another run, which they did. And for a period of four days, they tried to bust through that level. Can't bust them up. What's it going to try to do? Or can't bust them down. It's going to try to bust them up. Well, it did bust them up, got above resistance, the top of the box, on April Fool's Day, and continued to move higher. We now have this next attempt right here of sellers to see what kind of muscle they have. We're within about eight points of the low today was within about eight points. The low was 2901. The bottom of the box is 2894. So that's seven points, give or take. 
John, I think that uh, if there's something more serious going on, which I'll just simply call a change in trend, um, we will see 2894 fail, just as we've seen 26332 fail. And in the NQ, we'd be looking for 76 and a quarter. And in the uh, Russell, it'd be 1561. So only one of the indices right now is giving that signal. What I haven't done, what I don't know, John, is inside the Dow, you know, is it Boeing? Well, who's the big drag on it? Uh, but to get a unanimous vote, all of these need to, if there's a change in trend, something more significant, we need to see closes below the bottom of those daily profiles out there. Steve, thanks for, uh, for highlighting the ES Mini daily chart with those rising, with that sequence of rising TAS profiles. That's just a, uh, perfect. somebody should write a book about that one particular chart. Uh, that's quite all cool. Right. All right, thanks. Hey, thanks, John. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be right back, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the last two, uh, we got two questions that are in. One for Vicky in uh, um, somewhere in uh, Clearwater. Or, and anyway, Vicky wants to take a look at Bank of AmeriCorps. Uh, Bank America. Uh, BAC is the ticker symbol out there, Bradenton. Okay, so uh, Vicky, first things first, you've got a brand new profile that formed today. The top of that box is 3034. We're trading at 3049. That's a bullish signal out there. We're trading above the weekly, top of the box, well above that. That was 2585. So that's a, a bullish a signal out here. It does show prices moving into a swing point area. That was from August in 2018. That had 222 million shares. Uh, really not too shabby because you're at 200 million shares today. We have a day and a half sort of worth of trading. 
Today's 27 million, so you're pushing into a swing point with volume. That would suggest to me, based on looking at the monthly time frame, that what price is doing over the longer haul is moving up to 3305. That is the top of the monthly profile. On a daily time frame, what we like about the most recent action is the previous resistance area was really March 19th, and there was 55 million shares that traded that day. When that level was passed, it was 100 million shares. That's how you like to see resistance areas get taken out. And then there was a follow-up to it just a few days ago on April 29th when it was 70 million shares to the upside. So Bank of America itself uh, looks strong. I don't see any kind of topping signal out here for BAC. Hope that helps you out. And then finally, uh, for Hector, Hector wants to take a look at Harmony. Hector's specific question was this, or is this, uh, if uh, Harmony, HMY, can close at the 171 or above level, would that be a rejection of 122118? Where's 122118? 122118. I'm not sure why you're looking at 122118. In fact, I don't see 1220. Uh, yeah, I see it, but that's not really a swing point. What I would be looking at, Hector, would be the swing point down here, December 3rd. That level is 147 to 154 out here. I don't see harmony with a uh, bottom signal today, whether it closes at 171 or not. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Stay tuned. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on Fantastic Friday. Thanks for the call, John. And thanks for all the requests out there. Take care.